Aloha Kauai. Here's our daily COVID-19 briefing for Thursday, March 19. On Kauai, we currently have two positive cases of COVID-19 on island. The adult couple remains in isolation at a remote facility and both remain in stable condition. Statewide, we now have 26 total positive cases across the state. An additional 10 cases have been reported on only Oahu and Maui. We continue to be under a national emergency per the president. The Center for Disease Control updates its website regularly with detailed guidance related to COVID-19. For more information, please visit coronavirus.gov. Yesterday, we announced that we would be implementing a daily curfew from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily starting Friday, March 20th. This announcement resulted in questions and concerns that I'm hoping Police Chief Todd Raybuck and I can clear up for you today. Let's begin with our intent for the daily curfew. First, our emergency responder and medical staff resources are limited here on island, and we could become overburdened at a moment's notice. Given that this virus is affecting all other states in the nation simultaneously, should Kauai become overwhelmed, we may not see an immediate response of our off-island or out-of-state partners, as we have with other disasters. So it is imperative that we protect and preserve the health and well-being of our police officers, firefighters, AMR paramedics, and our entire healthcare system here as best we can. By limiting the amount of non-essential travel and interaction, at least during the late night hours, we can hopefully reduce their workload. We already got a report that our current actions have resulted in far less trauma incidents. So congratulations, folks. We are seeing results from some of the sacrifices that we've been making. Second, we have to realize that we cannot continue life as we know it. That must change, and change is extremely difficult. But if we can start by limiting the amount of leisurely travel and social interaction, we begin to affect change. Further, this limitation of social interaction includes our visitors, and restricting visitors to their rooms after 9 p.m. will make our island less attractive during this period of enhanced health pro precautions. Again, the intent is to limit non-essential or leisurely travel and interaction. It is not intended to restrict you from going to and from work, the airport, or to seek medical care. I hope that provides a little more clarity in our intent. Now let's get into some answering of frequently asked questions that we've received. Chief, let's start with question number one. What if I need to get to or from work late at night or need to pick up a family member from the airport after 9 p.m.? What do I do? Mahalo, Mayor. The Mayor's Emergency Rule number two has exceptions to the rule. First, among them, is an exception for those commuting to and from work. If you're driving to or from work between the hours of 9 p.m. and 5 a.m., you are not in violation of the curfew. However, if you are driving to or from work and you stop at a friend's house, stop somewhere else in between, it is a violation of the curfew. We also understand that some flights arrive after 9 p.m. If you're driving to and from the airport with no unnecessary stops in between, you would also be exempt from this rule. I'll pass question two on to you, Mayor. What about those who hunt or fish for food for our families? Are we now prohibited from that activity? Thank you, Chief, and that's a very great question. And I wanna thank the community for bringing that to our attention. I have a lot of friends that fish and hunt so this is very important to them because of many of them fish and hunt to feed their families. So based on community input, fishing and hunting are now additional exceptions that will be specified in the rule. As I understand, many families hunt and fish to put food on their tables. That said, activities must be limited to hunting and fishing. I know it's common for friends and families to come together to celebrate their catch. That activity would be prohibited. We also want to clarify that this does not allow people to hunt at night. This is just to say that we understand that hunters wake up very early to get to their hunting grounds. And as far as fishing and hunting, we want people to be safe. So let people know where you're gonna be and also try to go with a partner as long as you can maintain the right social distancing of six feet. And also I wanna re remind people that really this time of curfew is a time for rest and a time to strengthen our immune systems. Lack of sleep can often weaken your immune system, so please, Realize that this curfew is a good time for you to catch up with some much needed rest. So Chief, here's the last question for you. 
how will this rule be enforced? If I'm a delivery driver that needs to transport goods from the barge to the grocery store prior to 5 a.m., am I going to get pulled over and fined? Also, can I be arrested if I'm standing outside of my home but on my property? Thank you, Mayor. Like most misdemeanors, officers have the discretion to determine what action, if any, is taken on violations to the curfew rule. At this time, KPD is not planning to implement any additional measures beyond our regular patrol activities in order to enforce the curfew. However, if you are contacted you may f and, and in violation of one of these exemptions, you may uh, experience enforcement action. What we're asking for is that the public voluntarily comply with this new guideline in order to help mitigate the spread of the COVID-19, especially to our most vulnerable citizens and our kapuna. As to whether or not you're confined inside your home, no. The, ma the mayor's emergency rule number two is not a shelter in place order. This is not intended to keep you from moving freely about your property. It is meant to restrict the amount of social interaction within our community. However, if you're a visitor staying in a hotel, you will need to be in your hotel room at 9 p.m. and would be able to sit at a ho and would not be able to sit in a hotel restaurant. This, the purpose of this is to limit the social interaction in our hotel industry and those businesses to, again, reduce the spread of COVID-19. Our goal as law enforcement is to work with the community to help keep you safe during this time. And we appreciate everyone's efforts to work together to put the best interest of our island first during this unprecedented time. I'd also like to express my gratitude to Mayor Kawakami and his team for implementing this measure and to my fellow colleagues in our emergency response Ohana who continue to put the needs of others above our own for the well-being of our island. Thank you, Mayor. Mahalo, Chief, and a big, huge mahalo to you and our entire first responder team. Thank you for all you do. Again, I want to emphasize that we are continuing to monitor the community's feedback and we'll take your questions and concerns into consideration. We'll be making necessary amendments to emergency rule number two prior to implementation on Friday, March 20th, so stay tuned. In the meantime, I would encourage all of you to review the current rule in its entirety by visiting www.koi.gov forward slash kima. Click on the headline, Mayor's Emergency Rule Number 2. As we always do, we're going to end our daily video message with this friendly but critical reminder to please refrain from attending large public events. Remember, the CDC is now recommending that we refrain from social gatherings for groups of 10 or more. If you must interact with people in your daily life, keep a distance of six feet of separation. Stay home if you're sick. Keep your children home if they are sick. Limit your public outings to essential needs only and wash your hands frequently. That's our COVID-19 update for today. From our team here on Kauai, please keep updated here on our Facebook page or on our Kima page at www.koi.gov forward slash Kima. Mahalo.